clouds with fire, the whole earth shakes, whole earth shakes. Seas love and mercy, washing over all our sin, and the people sing, people So glad that you could join us uh, today. And we're gonna look at a passage of scripture in Isaiah chapter 26, uh, starting at verse one in a few moments. 
But first, if you're familiar with hiking, there's a phrase that's often used that's called to break trail or breaking trail. And to be clear, I'm not saying I'm familiar with hiking. I just wanted to feel a connection with all my hiking friends that are watching here today. When one is breaking trail, they take the lead position to clear a pathway that makes it much easier for those who are coming after to follow. They make way for those who are coming behind them. You see, you can either break the trail or you can reap the benefits of someone else who has already broken the trail. The greatest obstacle in our lives and to our own peace is often our own stubbornness, which says, I must break my own trail. I must make my own path. In other words, I need to blaze my own path in life. And while that can be a good sign of independence, it can also bring about some unnecessary obstacles and it can rob us of peace in our life when it doesn't need to. I mean, we can have this mentality, why learn from someone else's mistakes when I can make a whole bunch of my own mistakes that are gonna be really painful? Or we could learn from their mistakes. I wanna start off this morning by saying this, Jesus has already made a way, the way, the way that can only be found in him. All the other ways lead to pointless, busy work, despair, and a feeling of being unsettled. Today, we're gonna to speak about peace, in particular, God's peace. We most certainly are not going to look at everything there is to say about God's peace for that would surely put us in a place of being overwhelmed and then we would be lacking some peace. Kind of moving along here, I want to talk a little bit about the background before we jump to the passage of scripture today. The early parts of the book of Isaiah that we read are a lot about the judgment of God, the, the holiness of God. Beyond the book of Isaiah, we see that throughout much of the history of Israel, there were tumultuous times, most of which was brought about by their own doing or their lack of doing what God had asked them to do. The path, if you will, wasn't always smooth. There were ups and there were downs. There's two things today that we're going to look at, two points, if you will. And the first is one day and the second is in the meantime. So one day and in the meantime. The passage we're going to read, begin reading, of the first couple of verses anyways, it gives us a glimpse about how things are going to one day look. This is what it says in Isaiah 26, verses 1 and 2. In that day, everyone in the land of Judah will sing this song. Our city is strong. We're surrounded by the walls of God's salvation. Open the gates to all who are righteous. Allow the faithful to enter. So let's talk about that for a minute. In that day, today we would likely say one day. One day there will be singing. This is a song though, not just a, a thanksgiving, although that's a part of it. It's also a moment of salvation or celebration, sorry, about what is to come. One day there's gonna be justice. The justice that we long for when we see the wrongs made right. One day the wicked will not prosper or seem to prosper as much as they're doing right now. One day it's going to be the wicked are not going to prosper anymore at all. One day evil will be eradicated. Good will triumph over bad. Disease and sickness will be no more. One day. While these words were for the southern kingdom of Judah, I believe they ring true for us today. The question is, who will be protected? Those who are righteous, those who are faithful to God is what it said. Those who walk with God, not those who pretend to walk with God, not those who just have uh, seem to have it all figured out and never seem to have any problems in their life, not even those who appear to be really spiritual. Those who actually walk with God, not just those who uh, want the blessing of God, all the good things of God, and if I just do this bare minimum, then I'm going to be good with God. It's those who actually walk with God. They will be protected in this city. As a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, we can wait with, with something different, with a hope, with a hop in our step, so to speak, a, an expectation in our heart that one day all things will be made new. But what about now? What do we do in the meantime? Is there even hope for today? I want you to think about that. While, while we wait for a better tomorrow, is there something we can look forward to? Or is that just pie in the sky thinking that there is even going to be a one day? Which brings us to our second point, in the meantime. 
So we know that one day is going to be awesome, but what about now? What about what's going on? What about my concerns today? Is God with me today? Have you ever found yourself asking these questions? Maybe you've asked this question, has he left me alone to bear the weight of the wickedness all around me? Has he left me alone to figure out all my own problems that I caused even if I made some poor decisions? And really, if God is with me, why do I feel so afraid? You know, we hear these words often that God is with us and he's never going to leave us or forsake us. But we wonder, why do we feel so alone in the midst of the chaos and the world around us? Maybe as you're watching today, you feel, why can't my mind settle? Is there something I can hang on to? Is there something I can grab hold of while I wait? In the meantime, what do I do? How do I find peace in the meantime? Well, Isaiah 26 verse 3 and 4 says this, You will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you, all whose thoughts are fixed on you. Trust in the Lord always, for the Lord God is the eternal rock. Now that's in the New Living Translation. I want to read today also in the NIV. And maybe many of you watching are familiar with this part, with this version, if you will. It's similar, but but it's got a few different things. And I, I like I like how it says it here today. You will keep in perfect peace. You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast, those whose minds are leaning in, if you will, because they trust in you. Trust in the Lord forever. Not just for the moment or not just when you really need something. Trust in the Lord forever, it says in verse 4. For the Lord, the Lord himself, is the rock eternal. Now, some of you watching, if you're familiar with church life and maybe some old songs, this is kind of uh, loosely uh, the basis of the song Rock of Ages. But let's talk about that perfect peace. Perfect peace comes, it is available, if you will, for all who trust in God, those who fix their thoughts on Him. When your mind is steadfast, it means that it's leaning on, it's clinging to, it's steadfast, it's resting in, it's depending on God. That's what it means to be steadfast in these moments. When we fix our thoughts on Him, when we trust in God, perfect peace is absolutely available for all who trust in God. My question today is, who or what are you depending on for your peace today? What are you resting in this very moment? What are you clinging to? Where is your hope? Not where where you think your hope should be. Where is your hope actually? You see, our hearts and our minds become anxious when we fix our thoughts elsewhere. When you think that your savings account or your retirement plan is going to bail you out, or this nest egg that you've built up is going to help you out when things go really bad, what happens when the markets crumble? When you're not thankful for what you have in life, you're going to become anxious because you're going to feel like you're always missing out on something. You forget to be thankful for what God has done. You see, living for God doesn't mean that you're never going to experience hardship. You're never going to experience pain or loss. You will also get anxious when you feel like you can't control your world. You're you're not going to feel peace. You're going to feel an angst. Why can't I control this? However, when you trust in the rock, and now let me be really clear, I ain't talking today about Dwayne Johnson. I'm not talking about the movie star. When you trust in the eternal rock, the steadfast one, the steady one, the unchanging one, the rock of ages, he will, not he might, he will keep you in perfect peace. You see, hear me today. God is stable. He's reliable. He's trustworthy. He's not like your friends. He's not even like your spouse. As good as they might be, they will let you down at one time or another. He's not like your parents. He's not like your boss. And yes, he's not even like your pastor. He will uh, not let you down. Now hear me. He may not give you what you want because he knows what you need. He knows you better than you know you. He knows me better than I know me. And sometimes I might want things or you might want things that aren't even the best things for us. And God knows so he doesn't give us what we want when we want it. He gives us what we need. In Hebrew, the term perfect peace can be translated shalom. And you've probably heard that word before. And I I need to just talk about this for a few moments. This is very different than our modern day rendering of the term peace. 
You see, I think when we think about peace today, we think about the absence of conflict. We think it means the war is over. The two opposing sides have ceased fighting. There is now peace. If it's a divorce proceeding, you know, they stop fighting each other. There's now peace. That's kind of when we hear the word peace, we think perfect peace. We think, oh, there's no more conflict. There's no more trouble. But the word shalom in Hebrew and the Hebrew rendering of that, it's a Hebrew word. It's so much more than that. It means blessing. It means wholeness. It means health. It means quietness of soul. It means preservation and completeness. So Jewish people to this day will say when they meet somebody, shalom. They'd say, shalom, Mark. Shalom, fill in the blank. And it means blessing and wholeness and health and quietness of soul and preservation and completeness. So it's so much more than just two opposing sides who have ceased to, to fight. Now, although that can be part of it, that's just a little piece of it. And so sometimes I think when we are wearing our 21st century lenses in our worldview, we think, we don't, what do you mean perfect peace? There's never going to be war. Like there's going to be absolute, like that would be really cool to happen in our world. It means blessing and wholeness and health and quietness of soul and preservation and completeness. I needed to repeat that one more time. That's what I'm talking about. How many want the blessing of God? Listen, you can type in the chat there today. Uh, whether you're watching on our website or you're watching on YouTube, you can type in there today. That's what I'm talking about. Who wants the blessing of God? Who wants the wholeness and health that comes from God? What I'm not telling you here today is who wants there to be no problems ever in your life? That's not reality. That's not the world in which we live. Our world is broken and we are broken. We cause problems. We're around when there's problems. But who wants the blessing of God? I don't know about you. I do. Who wants the wholeness and the health that comes from God? Who wants a quietness in their soul, a rest in your weary mind? You know, it's so good to recently get away for a couple of weeks and just have some, have a season of quietness, just to have a different shift, a, a rest for my weary mind. But here's what I want to tell you today. It, it doesn't just come from getting away and, and having a vacation, although that's really good. It doesn't just come from changing your mind or quitting your job even so you don't have to think about those things. If you want this kind of life, you have to trust God. You have to trust him with your life. You have to trust him with your problems, with your family, with your decisions, with your finances, with your future hopes and dreams. You have to be willing to trust God with the miracle that you so desperately need and have been waiting for for so long. You have to trust God if you want perfect peace. so much more I want to say. I just, I think I'm going to start to wrap up today. I feel like we could talk lots about this and it probably resonates with so many in so many different ways. But if you've listened this far today and there's something that says in your heart, that's the life I want, but it feels so far from the life I actually have. Let me remind you, perfect peace looks like this. It means no inner turmoil, no angst, no overwhelming anxiety. I'm not saying you never have an anxious thought, but it's a no overwhelming anxiety, no striving against others to prove that you are better or even more worthy than they are. It's an inner quietness. It's a confidence. But it's not a confidence in your own ability. It's not a confidence in your own ability to figure things out. But in fact, it's a confidence that Jesus has already made a way for you. He's already broke trail for you and for me. And if you think for a moment when you hear this today, that's impossible. It's not even possible. I can't even imagine this could ever happen. Then guess what? You're right. It is. It's impossible when you try to do this on your own, when you try to make your own trail and your own path. You and I, we need Jesus. Let me just share something today before we, we finish. Before we end today, I, I want to be really clear about two kinds of peace because I think people kind of intermesh them and mix them up. The first we're going to look at real quickly is peace with God, and then we're going to talk about the peace of God. So peace with God and the peace of God. I want to be super direct today. What I'm about to say might scare you, it might offend you, and I'm okay with that because I want you, I love you enough to tell you the truth. You will never experience true peace in your life when you're fighting against God. 
when you refuse to listen to his ways, when you are disobedient, I don't care how good you are, I don't care how smart you are, I don't care even how many years you might have known about God or even went to church, when you refuse to listen to his ways, when you knowingly walk in disobedience to his word, you are not going to experience the peace we've been talking about here today. Let me approach this a different way. Simply put, Another way to say this, so that's kind of one portion of peace, uh, peace with God. Simply put, if you do not have a relationship with God and you are watching today, you cannot have the peace that we talked about today if you do not have a relationship with God. But please hear me. Don't let that discourage you. Because anyone who is willing to trust God, you can start today, at this very moment. You can say, God, I want to trust you. I want to invite you into my life. Please change me. I want this peace. I need this peace. You can experience the peace that I've been talking about here today. You see, if you know God, you will know peace. If you know God, you will know peace. It's an incredible thing. So there's a peace with God, having a relationship with God. And if you're knowingly walking in disobedience and you know better, but you're not doing better, you're walking in sin, that's the bottom line. You're not going to have peace. No wonder you're miserable when you go to church or you watch church online because you're not living up to what you know God has called you to live up to. There's no peace. There's a holy discontent that's going on in your life. The second thing that I want to talk about, the second kind of peace is the peace of God. Now, some of you are thinking, all right, like what, what, where, what are we talking about? You're thinking, I know God. I have a relationship with God, but I don't feel the perfect peace you've mentioned here today. I feel so unsettled. I, I don't feel at rest. There's, there's this constant angst. There's this con- My mind is constantly moving. I don't feel the peace of God. What, like what's going, is there something wrong with me? Is there something wrong with me? Well, there's two answers to that question, no and yes. No and yes. Now, just stick with me real quickly. No, you're not any different than any of the rest of us. We have all been there. Uh, We have been there. We are there or we will be there. That's just how it is in life. We sometimes feel unsettled. We sometimes feel all these things. And yes, there is something wrong. So I said no first for a reason, and the yes is, in other words, you're like a lot of us, but there's a yes component to this. And I know I can speak this because I've experienced it in different seasons of my life. Yes, there is something wrong. And you know what's wrong? You're likely not trusting God completely in an area of your life. You see, you cannot manufacture peace. You cannot manufacture the peace of God. You cannot acquire peace by doing more. You can't buy it. It's not like you can go online like Bitcoin and buy me some more peace. Can I buy some peace coin and be okay? No, it doesn't work that way. You can't, you can only receive peace by trusting in God. And let me remind you that he is the one who is trustworthy. He has your best interests at heart. You see, the reason you do not always feel at peace is because you're sometimes, you're just like me. You're just like others. You're trying to break your own trail. You're trying to walk in your own steps. You're trying to make your own path. You want to show everyone else that you can make it. But here's the deal. Jesus has already made a way, the way. Walk in his ways. Follow in his steps today. You want perfect peace? Follow him. Follow what his word says. Philippians 4, 6, and 7. I feel like you can never talk about peace without mentioning this passage of scripture. It's often mentioned, but quickly ignored. Did you hear what I said there? It's often mentioned, but quickly ignored. It reminds us that we are supported by God and do not need to be shaken by the chaos around us. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need. So don't worry about, listen, you can choose worry or you can choose, I'm not going to worry. Instead, pray. Pray about everything. When you begin to worry, begin to pray. Tell God what you need and thank him for what he's done. Say, God, here's what I need. I'm starting to worry and I need, God, I need some direction. I need some wisdom. Can you help? And we serve a God who is generous in his wisdom. James tells us that in the scriptures and it's wonderful. Tell God what you need and thank him for what he's done. Now hear this. Then you will experience God's peace. Not peace that the world has to offer. Not peace that the world has to offer. John chapter 14, 27 talks about that. The peace that Jesus gives, the peace that God brings is totally different. 
It exceeds anything it goes on to say that we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. It will guard, it will protect your hearts. It will act as, the word, the rendering is literally like an umpire in your heart. It's like a referee in your heart. It'll referee your heart. It'll say, it'll call things out. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. The world around us says, find yourself, speak your truth. Put it out in the universe. Then you'll find your peace. All of this is poppycock. I just wanted to say the word poppycock, all right? Just, I don't know, just leave me alone. All of this is poppycock. There, I said it again. It's nonsense. You'll never forget this moment because I used that old English word. It further depletes one's peace when you say, I'm just going to speak my truth. Well, what happens when your truth is not true, when it's a lie? I'm just going to put it out in the universe. If you put it out in the universe, the universe does nothing. What happens then? The world says, find yourself. And I believe the scriptures say, find Jesus. I want to invite you to know the one who the Bible calls the Prince of Peace. You see, peace of mind today is found in trusting God, the eternal rock. Hear me, you're not alone. He is with you. He will guide you, strengthen you, and comfort you in your troubles. He will give purpose to your pain, joy to your mourning, provision for your needs all along the way. Do not despair today. Instead, trust. Stay on the path that God has set before you. Keep your eyes fixed. Be steadfast. Lean in. Cling to. Rest upon God. Make sure your mind is set and your heart is steadfast on the things of God. One last time. I want to talk about this incredibly descriptive promise. I want to leave you with the word of God today. You will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you. Not some, but all who trust in you. All who lean into you. When we lean into God, when we trust what his word says, all whose thoughts are fixed on you. God will keep you in perfect peace. That is good news today. If you love this news today, if you want to have a relationship with Jesus today, you can invite him in. And if you already know Jesus and you're lacking in peace, you can read the scripture today. You can underline it, highlight it in your Bible or on your phone, in your version app, wherever you're reading this today. It says, you will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you, all whose thoughts are fixed on you. The next time you want your thoughts to run somewhere else, to look to your bank account or look to this friend or that friend or this person that you depended on, they let you down. If you will trust in Jesus Christ, if you will trust upon the Lord Jesus Christ, you don't have to fear, you don't have to worry. There's going to be no matter the turmoil. Listen, turmoil will be around you, but perfect peace is inner peace. The exterior might be chaotic and crazy, but inside you'll feel this peace. You might have a big decision to make. You might be waiting for breakthrough and a miracle. You might need a financial miracle. You might need a physical miracle. You might need a miracle in your relationships. But perfect peace only comes when we trust in God. I want to say this one last time. He is worthy to be praised and he is trustworthy. He's faithful and true and steady and reliable. Let's pray today. God, today, today as I shared this word, I know, God, that I'm an imperfect person. I know that I'm an imperfect person, but out of the middle of that, God, I pray today that people have heard your word. I pray, God, today that they would understand the truth of your word, the promise of your word here today, that you will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you. So, Lord, for everyone watching today, I pray they would put their complete trust, not 75% or 80%, but 100% trust in you. I pray, God, when they worry, they would do what it says in Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. God, help us. The moment we begin to worry that we begin to pray. God, help us to trust you. Lord, I know we have a hard time trusting people because we've been let down, but we know this about you, that you are worthy. You are trustworthy. You are true. You will never let us down. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you today for your presence. I pray you would encourage all those. God, bless them as they face their week. Lord, I pray worry and fear and anxiety would begin to fade away as they trust in you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I wanna take a moment to say thank you for those who've continued to support Cornerstone with their prayer and generous support. Without your help, we wouldn't be able to continue doing what we've been able to do over these last number of months. I would also ask that you would take some time to follow, like, subscribe, and share. 
so that we can reach more people with the truth of God's Word.